Thank you. Say neat. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is rewrite it now as u to the one fifth du. By multiplying by five and by one fifth, we have the du that we need. Okay. The integral itself. Add one to the exponent. Divide by the new exponent. When you divide by six-fifths, you multiply by five-sixths plus c. And you should go back to t. All right, the original variable, the fives cancel. We'll get one-sixth t to the fifth minus 29 to the six-fifths plus c. And that's the answer. what it is. Okay. Now, I probably would not put that on the final, but it's not that complicated. But it, uh, yeah. the ones on the final are, are pretty straightforward. But, but you have to be able to do that kind of substitution mm -hmm. to get that u to the n form. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Here's what we did last time. We did trig integrals involving sines and cosines. Okay? And I said this. If we had this integral of, say, sine cubed, even though it looks like a u to the n form, it is not in its present form. Because if you let u equal sine, the du is cosine. And we don't have it. But you can make this a u to the n form by splitting off one of these signs converting the rest to cosines multiplying this out And realizing what we have now are two pretty straightforward integrals, the integral of sine being negative cosine. And then this one here is a u to the n form, because by letting u equal cosine, the du is equal to a negative sine. So you multiply by negative here and make this a positive. You get u squared du. And that integral is u cubed over 3 plus a constant. That would be your answer. So the idea is with sine and cosines to odd exponents, split one of them off to serve as the du and convert the rest to its co-function. Okay? That shouldn't be too bad. And you could expect a problem like this. This is like standard uh, kind of integral that you do for the trig integrals. A cosine cubed or a sine cubed would be something you could expect to get on a test on this chapter. Problem is, when you have sines and cosines to evens, you can't do that little trick. It doesn't work. What if you were to change the sine squared to the half angle form instead? This one here? Yeah. At this point? If you were to change this to 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x times sine x, you've got a problem. It's not a problem with the first one when you multiply it out, because that's OK. It's the problem is with the second one. When you've got different arguments, you've got a problem. As a matter of fact, the general technique, not that we do anything with it, is if you have different arguments, you've got to get them the same. Yeah. So yeah, that's not going to be useful. All right, so let's take a look. This is something we did again last week. We did sines and cosines to even exponents when we don't have that little mechanism to, do, to use. So if we have cosine squared, okay, what we're going to do instead is use a half angle substitution. That half angle substitution is on that piece of paper that I gave you. You should know that cosine squared is 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x. That, believe it or not, this is called a half angle formula, even though there's a 2x here. But, okay. You make that substitution, and then the integral is pretty simple. You get 1 half. The integral of 1 dx is x. 
you have a cosine u form, u is 2x, the du is 2dx, multiply by 2 and multiply by 1 half, the integral of cosine u is sine u plus c. Okay? And that's what the uh, answer would be. Okay? So you're going to have to know that, and I'm going to tell you this. On a test for this chapter, the integral of cosine squared or sine squared, you know what, has a high probability of being on that test. Okay, it's just something that it's expected that you know. Because when you leave here, you go to count three, it's not so much in count three, we do integrals in count three, but maybe we do one integral that's cosine squared or sine squared. It's in diffy cues. It's in diffy cues that you're gonna run across a, a bunch of these integrals that you have to do. In differential equations, you have to do a lot of integrals, all right? All right, that's sines and cosines. Let's go to tangents and secants. Tangents and secants are a problem, okay? They're a problem because they're so similar. What you're going to have to know going into this, you have to know some stuff. You have to know the derivative of tangent. What's the derivative of tangent? No. Secant squared. You have to know the derivative of secant. Not secant. Good. You're going to have to know those derivatives in order to do the integrals. Okay? You're going to have to know the integral of tangent. Oh, when I pause like that, it means I'm waiting for someone to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Negative natural log cosine. Wow! Who said that? I don't know. Wow! Jeez. Negative natural log cosine. Perfect. You have to know the integral of secant, which is something like nobody knows, except for maybe Trent. But other than that, the integral of secant? Natural log. Yep. No. No. Negative What? Secant, that's pretty close. It's secant u plus tangent u. I wouldn't even ask you that on the test. But there's two others that you should know. You should know the integral of secant squared. This is just going into this section, okay? <coughs> I'm not going to ask too much of you in this section in addition to what I'm giving you right here. But the integral of secant squared, tangent. Why? Okay, because when you look back here, the integral of, of uh, secant squared is tangent because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. That's how you check an integral, right? You take the derivative of the result to see that you get what you started. And the integral of secant tan is secant. Okay, these are the basic things you should know going into this. So, if you have to do this problem, the integral, let's say of tangent squared, the bottom line is this. You're going to have to change it. We don't have the integral of secant squared anywhere here. You're going to have to change this into an integral that you can do. And what this one means is to realize that you can change tangent squares into secant squares by using a Pythagorean identity. This is where you're going to need that Pythagorean identity, okay? Tangent squared is what in terms of secants? In terms of secants? Yeah. It's plus tangent plus one is secant. Yeah, tangent squared plus one is secant squared. So tangent squared is secant squared okay, minus one, okay? And now, once you have this, you can, you, the integral is simple. The integral of secant squared is tangent. The integral of 1 is x plus c. Okay? You're going to have to be aware of that. You're going to have to be able to do such a thing, to take that tangent squared and change it to the secant squared by using that Pythagorean identity. Now, what about something like tangent cubed? Uh, I guess it's 4. 8.3 still. Trig integral still. 
I'm still doing trig intervals. Yeah, that's, you know, that's exactly right. You're going to take a tangent out, leaving you a tangent squared. Okay. Okay. Take a tangent out, and you have a tangent squared. Now, what can you do with that tangent squared? Turn. Yep. Yeah, time. That's the way. Okay. Change it to secant squared. Now, what do, you, what do you have here? You've got two integrals. Secant squared tangent, and you have the integral of tangent. The integral of tangent, no big deal. We already know that. Negative natural log cosine, so that's not a problem. How do you do the integral of secant squared tangent? Do you have to pull out a secant again? No, no. Well, well okay. What's that? No, no, don't make it too complicated. Here, here's the deal. When you do any integral, not just the trig ones, but any integral, what you should always be thinking about is by letting u equal something, do I have the du there to go with it? Do I have an easy integral to do? So u equals secant squared. Well, the derivative of secant squared would be 2 secant secant tan. And it seems to me that's going to be a little bit more complicated than you need. It's Perfect. That's exactly what you would want to do. Let u equal tangent because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. When you look at this, you should see that by letting u equal tangent, du is secant squared, and this integral is simply the integral of u du. Okay, it's a simple integral. Okay? But you have to see that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay? Now the integral is u squared over 2, okay, and that would be your answer for this one, and that one would be, like we said, negative natural log cosine. All right. How are we doing on this now? What is the, what, the minus tan x? The integral of minus tan x. All right, well, let's, this one here, this part of it, we already know is a negative natural log cosine. So this would be a plus natural log cosine. Your final answer for this whole integral would be a tangent squared, x over 2, that's what you get from this one, plus natural log absolute value cosine. That would be your final answer. OK. All right, I'm not asking you, I, here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you have to know the stuff that I gave you up here. Knowing that stuff, you're going to have to be prepared to take something like tangent squared and rewrite it as secant squared minus 1, knowing that you can do both of those integrals. Because you know the integral of secant squared is tangent. And given a tangent cubed, by splitting it up this way and taking the tangent squared and making it secant squared minus 1, hopefully you can see that that integral, too, is a pretty simple one to do. Okay, I'm going to pause there a minute. Because I do want to show you one other thing with this integral. Okay? All right. I want to go back to this one. Okay? I did that one by letting u equal tangent, du is secant squared. That's the natural way to do that problem. But there is another possibility. Let me show you this. The way almost everybody would see this is to let u equal tangent, the du is secant squared. That's the way we did it. But occasionally, there's an unusual student who will look at this and say, Burns, why not do it this way? And let u equal secant. After all, what's the derivative of secant? Secant tan, we got it. It's right there. What? Where am I? Oh, I'm in the recording. It just gives you du, though. Okay. What's that? It only gives you du, right? Well, here's what we have. We've got u, <coughs> du. We get u squared over 2. But the u is secant now. When we did it before, we got a tangent squared. Now we're getting a secant squared. Which one is correct? 
Both of them are correct. Okay. Hey, how are you doing, Danielle? Is that the same thing like sine squared is prime, cosine squared, integral of that is two answers? Yeah, 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 exactly. The thing is, these two answers are both correct. They differ by a constant. After all, what is secant squared equal to? Tangent squared plus one. Pythagorean identity. And that's equal to tangent squared over two plus one half plus a constant. Well, what's one half plus a constant? C. It's C. It's a constant. The two answers are equivalent. Okay? The two answers are equivalent. So this may happen if you do WebAssign. They may give you an integral, and you may get an answer, and you look at, the, and WebAssign may say it's incorrect, actually. There is one problem in there that if you do it the strange way like this, it'll say it's incorrect, but it is indeed correct. Okay, because of this. So we might be suffering that well, is it only this one? No. Uh, no. You know, there's other possibilities. But if you do it the way that is most natural and normal, okay, you'll get the right answer because that's what WebAssign does. They do them. They, they WebAssign would not do it this way. But I do want to point that out because there is that possibility that what exists. Would be the right answer for the sine squared, cosine one? If you have, what, 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 give me the problem. Okay, if you've got a cube, that's that's the problem. All right, so if you've got sine squared, cosine squared, let's go down. Did I do this one last yeah. time? I don't know. But here's what you would have to do here. Okay, one way to do it is to let sine squared be 1 minus cosine squared and then multiply it out and end up with a cosine squared and a cosine to the fourth. I would not recommend that, but you're going to get some answer that's going to be equivalent to this. I don't want to confuse people by doing that one out, but here's what I do want to do. I do want to do this one out. What would you do here? You would do sine squared cosine squared You'd have to use a half angle on each. I think I think I did, did do this. Yeah, I did do this. And you got one fourth to take out. You have a one minus cosine squared, okay, two x. And then what do you do? A half angle again on this one. Okay? Let's do it. The one is no big deal. What is cosine squared four x equal to? If you use the half angle on this, what do you get? One, one plus cosine of, what's the argument there? 4x. 4x. Good. And I think we did that last time. It's twice this argument. Okay? It's twice whatever the argument is. The usual thing for sine squared. Should you just add those together? Cosine 2x plus cosine 2x. No, you can't. You got to do this multiplication. It was, I think it was cubed, yeah. Well, thanks, David. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, Taking cubed sine yeah. two, cosine cubed as two different answers, but they're same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can take a look at that. Uh, it's, it's All right. But here, here's the thing cosine squared. I don't know, I have them both. But here's cosine squared anyways. It's 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x. That's the half angle identity for cosine squared. The argument here is twice the argument here. Okay. So if I have a 2x here, I have to end up with a 4x here. That's like tech math, right? Yeah, yeah, that's tech math stuff. You should do that in tech math. Can you put that back there for a second? Can you do that last time? What's that? No, that's this class. The general was just AX. What's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can have all these notes. Okay. And actually, uh, uh, Nick's not going to be here. All right. Somebody will take pictures of them and I'll put them on um, the website. Okay. Okay. Here's the bottom line for sines and cosines. You should know if you get sines or cosines to odds, split one of them out, convert the rest, do the problem that way. Okay? 
If they're evens, both are evens, or you have just one and it's even, use the half angle to change it. <coughs> What's that? Even if one's even? Uh, no, if one's even and one's odd, you're golden because you take the one that's odd, oh. split one off, and convert the rest to the uh, co-function. That would be okay. For secants and tangents, I'm not going to ask you to memorize anything except what we already have. That stuff that I gave you in the beginning, the derivative of tangent, the derivative of secant, the integral of tangent, the integral of secant, the integral of secant squared, the integral of secant tan, this is stuff you should know. And being able, you should be able to use this to do some basic integral of tangent cube problem or the integral of tangent squared. I'm not going to give you anything exotic. I'm not going to give you anything beyond this. Okay? So you should be able to do these. Okay? And hopefully on WebAssign you get some practice doing them too. Any questions? Yes? I just don't move it yet. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, you can take, take oh. it. Oh. All right. Okay. You ready to go on? Let's go on. Oh, here's what we decided, Daniel. Your final exam, you should write this down. Next week. <laughs> Decided to get over with quick. Right? Sad. Well, we still have a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thursday. An eight-hour class. Thir <laughs> Thursday, May seventh is your final. When do regular classes end? Regular classes end the eighth, the next day. Day classes end the. So there's not going to be like a practice exam. There will be a practice exam the Monday, May fourth that previous class to that Thursday class. Does it still stand if you do really good at it? Yes, it will. I will do that. Okay. Let's move on. The next session is to do integrals by trig substitutions. Uh, I would say this would be uh, uh, 8.4, right? Yeah, 8.4. Trig substitutions. I'm going to start 8.5 today. Monday, I'm going to finish 8.5 on the partial fractions. And then I'm going to do... L'Hopital's rule as well. I'm going to finish partial fractions and do L'Hopital's. That's 8, 7. And then the next class, I'm going to do the improper integrals and I'm going to review and have the lab. Okay? Well, at least I'm learning most of it. Yes, most of it. Well, you're going to be doing tons of calculus on your vacation, right? No, she's going to have to. Yeah. Here we go. Every day. I have to do it every day. Right? Yeah. All right, let's do a problem. Let's suppose we have this problem to do. Suppose we have this integral. The integral, uh, let's say from 0 to 1, square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay? Let's see what we're talking about here. The square root of 1 minus x squared, what's that look like? What's that function look like? y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Yes, that's it. Vitaly has it. It's, he did it. Okay. It's a semicircle. Okay. It's a top half of a circle. If you look at y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, and if you square both sides, you get x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's the whole circle. But if you just take the square root, the positive square root, you're going to get the top half of that circle. That's what we've got right here. Okay? And we're going from 0 to 1. We're finding this area. Now, we can't do this integral right now. We can't do it because if you think this is a u to the n form, and you let u equal 1 minus x squared, we don't have the du and negative 2x dx to go with it. All right? 
We simply can't do the integral. However, we can change this integral and change it into something we can do by what's called a trig substitution. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to let x equal, and then I'm going to show you another way to do this as well. But first way is trig substitution. I'm going to let x equal sine theta. And you may protest and say, Burns, <laughs> x equals sine theta. Sine theta only goes from negative 1 to 1. Very limited range for sine. But what are my values for x inside this square root? Is negative 1 to 1. Oh, actually, 0 to 1 here. You're right, there. But the uh, possible range for this function, the, the domain of this function, rather, is from negative 1 to 1 only. In other words, I'm going to get all the possible values of x by letting x equal sine theta. I'm going to let x equal sine theta. I'm going to find dx. It's cosine theta, d theta. And I'm going to make a substitution. Okay. I'm going to, and, and not only that, when x is 0, what's theta equal to? 0. And when x is equal to 1, what's theta? 1. Nope. No. Zero. If x is equal to 1, what's theta? Zero. 90 degrees, pi over 2. Okay. Let x equal 1, sine of theta is equal to 1, uh, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So what I'm doing now is changing this integral around from x's to thetas. Okay? Changing it around. My limits are now from 0 to pi over 2. Square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay. D theta? Yep. dx is cosine theta d theta. Okay. Now, what have I gained by doing this? Well, I'll show you what I've gained by doing this. What's 1 minus sine squared equal to? Cosine squared. Out of way, Vitaly. And the square root of cosine squared is? Cosine. Cosine. Out of way. I'm going to replace this with cosine times this cosine. I got cosine squared. Now, this is an integral, integral we can do. Okay? How do you do the integral of cosine squared? Use a half angle. 1 half. 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Okay, is everybody okay with this? Okay. Let's do the integral. 1 half. The integral of 1 d theta is theta plus cosine 2 theta d theta. This is a cosine u form. u is 2 theta. du is 2 d theta. I'm going to multiply by 2 and by 1 half. The integral of cosine u is sine u. Okay. From 0 to pi over 2. All right, check that out, OK? Check that out. Did you say what you did again? <laughs> I Bless you. What's that? I got confused. About? What you just said. Okay. What's happening? Okay. What's the answer? The half angle is okay? Okay. What I'm saying is you get the one half out front, the one that goes one d theta is theta, and the one that goes cosine two theta d theta is a cosine u form. u is two theta, the du is two d theta. I need to multiply by two and by one half. So I have that du that I need. That's this one half. So now I end up with that one half cosine u du, the integral of which is sine u. Okay? And I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. Let's substitute it in pi over 2. Substitute in pi over 2 in here, you get the sine of 2 times pi over 2. That's the sine of pi. That's 0. Substitute in 0 to get 0. 0 to get 0, you get pi over 4. 
That's our answer. That's one way to do this problem. That's with a trig substitution. Nick. So you can't you can't find the integral of one minus x squared. In the, in the that square root? No. No, but wouldn't that be only true for sine, or does it work for everything else in that way then? If you have a one minus x squared, we're going to have three trig substitutions. One of them is, if you have a 1 minus x squared, we're going to let x equal sine theta. And if you have an x squared minus 1, we're going to use a secant theta. And if you have a 1 plus x squared, we're going to have a tangent theta. Okay? Why? We're going to take advantage of the Pythagorean relationships here. What did I do? Once I made the substitution, I had a 1 minus sine squared. I was able to replace that with cosine squared. That's a Pythagorean relationship. And then I could take the square root of it. That got rid of the square root for me. And that was the problem in this problem. By making that trig substitution, I could eliminate the square root. There's a totally different way to do this particular integral that I want to point out, though. What are we doing here when we do this <laughs> integral? We are finding this area. This is one of those very rare cases where instead of using an integral to find an area, which is what's almost always done, we're using the, we could use the area to evaluate the integral. Okay? What's the area of this unit circle? It's pi r squared or pi. How much of that whole circle do we have here? One fourth of it. That area is pi over four. Okay? by using the fact that we have the area of a quarter of a unit circle. So be aware of that. If I were to give you this on the test, the answer is pi over 4 without going through all this. All right? You should have started with that. <laughs> oh, then you would have turned and you wouldn't even listen to anything I said. Not that you did anyways, but you wouldn't have listened to anything. All right. There are three trig substitutions that you should know. All right, we'll see you next. you think Vitaly can do this? Uh, he already did it once or twice. Uh, no. All right. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. There are three trig substitutions that we can use. Okay. Um, here they are. Uh, before I give you that, let's suppose we had this problem. Can someone tell me the substitution that we would use here? that will enable us to get rid of the square root by letting x equals sine, sine but not just sine. Uh, nine. Nine, nine, sine nine, you're on the right track, though. Sine squared. <laughs> yeah. uh, sine, but what times sine? Because we're going to have to square it 3. Yeah, that's it. You're going to let x equal 3 sine theta. Okay? By doing that, and the dx is equal to 3 cosine theta d theta. Why? Because when you make the substitution, you get 9 minus 9 sine squared. The dx is a 3 cosine. You can take the 9 out front as a 3 times this 3. Be left with 1 minus sine squared times the cosine. And that's the kind of thing you want left. 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared. Yes, Nick? Is that after the 3, is that cosine theta? Yes, that's cosine theta right here. A little jammed up in there, but that's what it is. This gives you cosine squared. Square root of cosine squared is cosine. So you end up with this integral. Okay. I'm just saying. Wait, that 1 minus, that's cosine? Yes, 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared, oh. square root of which is cosine. Okay. This cosine times that gives you the cosine squared. All right, I'm going to give you the three trig substitutions, then we'll do another example with them, okay? Here are the three trig substitutions. Okay. First one, if we have u squared minus a squared, that I don't want to do that one first. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a squared minus u squared first. That's what we have right here. The a is a constant. The u is the, in terms of the variable. The substitution that you're going to make here is 
to let u equal a sine theta. That's what happened here. Okay. Here, u is equal to x. That x equals 3 sine theta. That substitution will enable you to take out a 9, be left with a 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared, and take the square root of it. If you have a squared plus u squared, the substitution to make is to let u equal a tangent theta. I'm going to do an example of that in a minute. And if you have u squared minus a squared, the substitution to make is to let u equal a secant theta. Okay. So, let's do a problem. Okay, you ready? Let's do this one. We'll keep it pretty simple here. Here's the problem. Can someone tell me what the integral is right now off the top of your head? Because this is something we've done already. You bet it is. That's exactly what it is. It's an inverse tangent. A squared is 25. A is 5. So this will be a 1 fifth inverse tangent x over 5 plus c. That's what the answer is going to be. Let's suppose you can't remember that. Okay? You can't remember. Jeez, is that inverse tangent, inverse c again? You can't remember. You can do the problem by a trig substitution, okay? I'm going to let x equal what? What should I let x equal here? Tangent theta. Tangent theta, but what coefficient of tangent theta? What is it? No. Five. I need a five because the a squared is 25 yeah. and a is five. So I'm going to let x equal five tangent theta. The dx is the derivative of tangent secant squared. Okay. But he's with me? Mm -hmm. Gaster, how you doing? All right, guy? Okay. Here we go. Substitute it in. 1 over x squared. That's 25 tangent squared plus 25 times dx 5 secant squared okay how are we doing okay you okay Daniel yeah. I'm just I know yeah. oh man actually I'm well, i got to start partial fractions, but we're getting there. All right, so what happens here? I factor out a 25. It comes all the way out front. I take this 5, bring it out front. I'm going to have a 5 over 25. I'm going to have a 1 fifth out here. I'm going to have a tangent squared plus 1 and a secant squared. Okay. But what's tangent squared plus 1? Secant squared. secant squared. I have a secant squared here, and I have a secant squared there. They cancel right out. So I'm left with 1 fifth, the integral of d theta. It's kind of neat. So what's the integral of d theta? Theta. Now, let's go back to x's. What the heck is theta equal to? Here's x equals 5 tangent theta. I want to solve for theta. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by 5, and then do what to each side to solve for theta? Inverse tangent. So what's theta equal to? The inverse tangent of x over 5. So what do I get for an answer? 1 fifth. OK. 1 fifth. Inverse tangent, x over 5 plus c. And that is what we said the integral would be if we had done the inverse tangent or arctan form. Okay? So you could argue that you don't have to memorize any of the inverse trig forms, the integrals. You can derive every one of them 
with a trig substitution, which is true. I'm not sure if that's what you want to do. But the trig substitutions enable you to do a lot more integrals than just that. What's wrong? Go ahead, Melissa. How do, I thought the final answer was uh, one-fifth theta plus c. It's one-fifth theta plus c. Yeah, and then what's the next step? The next step is to solve for theta in terms uh, of x. Divide by 5 and take the inverse tangent of both sides. Okay. And that's where this comes from. All right, I'm going to do one more trig substitution one. What's that? Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do one more trig substitution. Okay. And then what we're going to do is a partial fraction. We're going to start partial fractions. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Let's do this problem. The integral of 1 over x squared minus 9 dx. Can you see it? Oh, where am I? Okay. 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 Let's do this integral. Please note, it's not any of the integration forms we have. None of them. If I didn't have a square here, if that were 1 over x minus 9, I'd have a 1 over u du form. If I had an x up in the numerator over the x squared minus 9, again, I would have a 1 over u du form. Okay? But I don't have those things. All right? If this had been 1 over x squared plus 9, it would be an inverse tangent form. Or if this had been 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared, it would be an inverse sine form. I don't have any of those. What am I going to do? I'm going to use a trig substitution. Okay? Is everything okay? There <laughs> 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 you go. Uh, good deal. Okay. I. <laughs> I gotta tell. No, that's okay. That was fine. I just. I, never mind. I said, one, once I was in the class, right, and at the end of the class, somebody told me that something was wrong there. At the end of the class, you know what I mean? So I can just picture now, the whole class was staring at me the whole time. <laughs> but anyhow, okay, let's do a trig substitution here. I'm going to do this problem two ways, all right? Two ways we're going to do this. Easy way. The easy way is with partial fractions, but I'm going to have to do a trig substitution first because this is, this is what you have to do. Is that'll give you, that'll have you appreciate the partial fractions a little bit more. Okay. All right, so first way I'm going to do this is with a trig substitution. Okay. What trig substitution am I using for this? I'm going to let x equal what? Three secant, three secant theta is absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay. Three secant theta. Okay. It's a u squared minus a squared form, it's a secant. I'm going to have to solve for dx. Okay. This is going to get nasty, but we can do it. Yes? I don't know which one to use. It's a squared minus u squared, and then u squared minus a squared. Yeah, the u squared, the u squared minus a squared is what I'm using. The u corresponds to the x, the variable. Okay. a squared minus a squared. a squared minus a squared is probably not useful. So the dx derivative of secant, secant tan. Okay. Okay, here we go. Watch this. This is going to be an amazing problem. It looks like it's pretty simple, but it's rapidly going to turn evil. We're going to have x squared, which is going to be 9 secant squared minus 9 times dx, which is 3 secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Okay? Now, I can take a 3 from the numerator, a 9 out of the denominator, take those out front, to get 1 third. 
I'll have a secant theta, a tangent theta, all over a secant squared theta minus 1. However, what is secant squared minus 1 equal to? Tangent squared, out of way. That's exactly what it is. The point of making that particular trig substitution is so that you can replace that secant squared minus 1 with a tangent squared, okay? So you get 1 third, the integral of. Oh, I drew a vertical line here. Um, I don't want it. I want the secant theta. I want the tangent theta. I want tangent squared here and d theta. Can you cancel out Yes, I can. I'm going to cancel out the tangents right now. So I'm going to get a secant theta over tangent theta. Oh, man. This is looking bleak. Why does it look bleak? I don't have an integration form here. It, you know, if I had a tangent squared up there, it'd be 1 over u du. But I don't. Can you reduce that? Can you, yeah, can you do 1 over cosine? Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. If you get stuck with tangents and secants in an integral, the thing to do is go to sines and cosines. OK? And that's what I'm going to do. That secant is 1 over cosine. The tangent sine over cosine. The cosines will cancel. I get 1 over sine, which is not very nice. But what's 1 over sine equal to? Cosecant. Now, cosecant's not one I have, uh, I, I ask you to memorize. However, we can do it. It's a co-function of secant. We know the integral of secant is the natural log secant plus tan. So the integral of cosecant is a negative natural log absolute value cosecant plus cotangent. Okay. I said it's going to be evil. Okay, this is going to be evil. Now, guess what? We cannot leave it in terms of theta. We have to get back to x's somehow. Okay? Now, here's what you do, and there's a trick for this. This is a trick that comes up every so often. comes up in diffy-q's, too. Uh, here's a trick that uh, you have to do. We know that x is 3 secant. I want to get cosecants and cotangents in terms of x. The way you do that, do you know how to do that? No. No, what you do is use a right triangle. Watch this. Okay? Use a right triangle. Call this theta. Secant theta. It says it right here, is x over 3. Okay, That's what it says. Divide by 3. Now, what is the secant? It's the reciprocal of cosine. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So I'm going to make the hypotenuse x and the adjacent 3. What I'm going to do is make that assignment so that the secant of this angle is indeed x over 3. Check it out. Okay? Secant's reciprocal of cosine. Cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Solve for the other leg. What's the other leg equal to? Use Pythagorean theorem. x squared minus 9. This little trick, this is a tech math thing too. This little trick enables you to solve for any of the trig functions. We want cosecant and cotangent, so let's do it. Okay, let's look at the cosecant of this angle. The cosecant of this angle is the reciprocal of sine. The cosecant is reciprocal of sine. The sine 
is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Did that go to a negative one third? Or that's this negative one third is out here uh, <laughs> because when I integrated cosecant, it's a negative natural log oh, cosecant okay. plus tan, and that's where the negative t uh, came in from. Okay? Plus cotangent, that's the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cose a cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Okay, we're not quite done yet. This is still the first way. This is still the first way. Maybe not. Let's make it more important. That's the law. That's the value. You've got to save it on over. Get the bottom. Get to one. Okay. You with me? Alright. I, I don't like this answer though because we can still do other things to it. Here's what I'm going to do. Believe it or not. What's that? Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this x squared minus 9 and factor it into x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay. So, this is going to be an x plus 3. And I'm going to have an x plus 3 and an x minus 3 inside this square root. Now, watch this. I've got x plus 3 over the square root of x plus 3. When you take a number and divide by its square root, what do you get? When you take 7 divided by the square root of 7, what's that equal to? 3 and a half. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a good shot. What's that? 7 over the square root of 7 is? Square root of 7. When you take a number divided by its square root, you're going to get the square root. Um, do, uh, let me do it this way. 25 divided by the square root of 25 is going to be 5. Okay, the square root of 25. All right, think of it this way. This is to the first power. This is to the 1 half power. Subtract the exponents. And then you end up with an x plus 3 to the 1 half. What you're going to end up with is this. Each, this will be a square root of x plus 3 over this square root. I'm going to have one square root. Okay, you're gonna have to trust me on that. Okay. And the final thing, the best answer here, is to realize that the one half power is the square root and take it out front. We get the natural log of something to the one half, you can take the one half out front. So my final answer is negative one sixth natural log, absolute value, x plus three over x minus three. Did you get that um, 1 over 6? Because I took this to the 1 half power, and one of the properties of logs is you can take an exponent out front. Uh -huh. Okay, That's my final answer there. Okay, you ready? That's doing a trig substitution. There's a better way. There's a better way. <laughs> All right. All right. Woo! Yeah. All right. Let's see what the, our better way is. Let's go back to the original. This is with what's called partial fractions. Now, I just want to start the partial fractions today. We're not going to finish it today, but I want to do this one with partial fractions. In partial fractions, what we're going to do here is factor this expression if we can, and we can. And then what I want to do is split this up into two fractions. Okay? I'm going to take this and split it up into two fractions. Some constant over x plus 3 
and another constant over x minus 3. Okay? That's what I want to do. Can we find a constant a and a constant b? So we add these two fractions up, we end up with this. Well, let's see if we could do this. If I'm going to combine these two fractions into one, I'm going to have to find their LCM, least common multiple, which is their product, x plus 3, x minus 3. And that means this one would get multiplied by x minus 3 over x minus 3. This one gets multiplied by x plus 3 over x plus 3. You with me on this? Oh, God, I'm killing everybody off. Oh, gosh. All right. When I do that, I'm going to have this. I'm almost done, actually. And next, and on Thursday and Monday, I'm going to give you the burn super fast way of doing this. But right now, i got to do it kind of the long way. I can't give you the burn super fast way yet. You're not ready for it. All right. So here you go. If you multiply this out, you're going to have an ax and a bx. Okay? I'm going to have an a plus bx. I'm going to have a minus 3a and a plus 3b. Okay? You with me in that? Okay. So, go ahead. Okay. Now, here's the deal. This is equal to this fraction over here. How many x's do I have in the numerator over here? How many x's do I have in the numerator over here? Zero. How many x's do I have in the numerator over here? A plus b of them. If these guys are going to be equal, that tells me that a plus b has to equal zero. Because I don't have any x's here. If the problem had started with 7x over here, my a plus b would have to equal 7. Okay. Now, I've got a constant. It's negative 3a plus 3b. My constant over here is a 1. All right, take, wait, what's wrong? You guys all okay? It's like magic. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I give you my burn super fast way, you can do these in your head. And it'll be even more magical. Okay, <laughs> but, it, but it takes some practice to, to do it my way. Oh, I'd be curious to see um, what Professor Brewer does with that. I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. Oh, you guys are doing partial fractions tomorrow? We finished 8-3 yesterday. Oh, all right. Okay, cool. Okay. So we're ahead uh, of the game? We're right where we should be. We're, I've got the whole thing mapped out where we're going to have our final May 7th, and we're exactly where we should be. Yeah, I'm here during the day anyway, so I just sit in. Yeah. Oh, you sit in another? Yeah. You're doing this twice. Yeah. Bless yeah. your heart. What's that? Bless your heart. Oh, it's fun. What well, the heck? He has the time. Oh, well, all right. That's not what you meant. You meant this is torture. And gosh, you wouldn't want to be him for anything in the world. All right. That's what you were saying, Melissa. All right. All right, so we're going to solve the system of equations, OK? Well, easy enough to do. Multiply the top one by 3. Add them up. These cancel. 6b is equal to 1. b is 1 6. Wait, what happened with 3a plus 3b equals 0? Is it because it's a plus b is 0? No, the, the minus 3a, or negative 3a plus 3b is equal to 1. That's this right here. And what I did, a plus b is equal to 0 because I don't have any x's. Then I multiply this one by 3 to get 3a plus 3b equals 0. And now I added these up. See that again? Why did you multiply it by 3? So that I would get opposites on the a's. So when I add them up, the a's will cancel. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. So b is 1 sixth. If b is 1 sixth, what's a? Negative 1 sixth. OK? OK, so here we go. You ready for this? This integral of 1 over x squared minus 9 is equal to this integral, a over x plus 3 plus b 
over x minus 3. I just solve for a and b. Okay. I'm substituting in for a and substituting in for b. Whoa. What form is this integral? What form is this integral? U. Well, not u. You can't. And it's not u. It's well, what over u? No way. Wasn't sure. It's one over u du form. This is a natural log. What is this integral? It's one over u du. I have two one over u du forms. I'm going to do this one first. This one gives me a one sixth. The natural log of x plus x minus three minus a one sixth natural log x plus 3. Let's see. Now, I've got the difference of two integrals. What can I do? I can rewrite that as a natural log of their quotient. 1 sixth natural log x minus 3 over x plus 3 plus c. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh, OK. This negative is in the minus. Okay, right here. This minus? Okay, now I lost this. Oh, shoot. Okay. The other one, <laughs> the other one is a negative 1, 6, and I have the x plus 3 over x minus 3. I should, I should not have settled for this minus here. I should have taken it one more step, made this a plus, and taken the reciprocal. But I didn't. So here's what I'm going to have to do. I want this answer to look like this answer. This is what we did from the trig substitution. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by negative 1 here. And when I do that, I'm going to multiply this by negative 1, which meets, makes this an exponent of negative 1, which means take the reciprocal. So this is this. Think of this to the, neg this to the negative first and take the negative 1 out front. I have exactly the same answer. Instead of doing this trig substitution, well, this looks pretty messy too, I must say. We did by partial fractions. But when I give you my burn super fast way of doing it, I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm just going to tell you what it is, but I'm going to go over it again on Monday. Watch this. This is what it is. See, what, see if you can follow this. Here's what I'm going to say. Let me just give you this. That's an A. Now, here's, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to solve for A and B by doing the following. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x plus 3. And then I'm going to let x equal negative 3. <coughs> Watch what happens. If I multiply both sides of this equation by x plus 3, this x plus 3 cancels out. I'm going to let x equal negative 3 now. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Over here, I get a negative 1, 6. Wait, say that in one more okay. I'm multiplying both sides by x plus 3. And then I'm going to let x equal negative 3. This x plus 3 is gone because I multiply by x plus 3. And when I now let x equal negative 3, I get negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. What happens on this side of the equation? I'm multiplying by x plus 3. This x plus 3 is gone. a is sitting there by itself. Plus, this is getting multiplied by x plus 3. But I'm going to let x equal negative 3. What happens to this whole term when I multiply it by x plus 3 and let x equal negative 3? It's zero. It's gone. A is negative one-sixth. Let's solve for B. Watch this now. Here's what I'm going to do. To solve for B, I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 3. And then I'm going to let x equal 3. Whatever makes it zero. When I multiply by x minus 3, this x minus 3 is gone. Let x equal 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. I get 1 sixth. 
I'm going to multiply by x minus 3 and let x equal 3. This is going to be a 0. It's gone. I'm going to multiply this by x minus 3. The x minus 3's cancel, and I get b. I get b is 1 6, a is negative 1 6, which is exactly what we have over here. I have to do all this stuff. A lot of these problems with partial fractions you can do in your head, but not all of them. Okay, we're still going to have to do something else. But that's what I'm going to do on Monday. So here's what you should be doing. You should be doing 8.3 8 8 and 8.4. And you could start 8.5, the partial fractions. But we haven't finished 8.5 yet. What I'm going to do on Monday is finish 8.5. Do 8, 6, <coughs> okay, partial fractions, uh, no, we skip 8, 6. I'm going to do 8, 7, L'Hopital's. 8, 6 is numeric integration where you'll, oh, tables, you look it up in tables, that's nothing, we're not going to do anything with that. We're going to do 8.7, and we'll see where we are, okay? Are you guys okay? Yeah, do you have the no sign?